Today we see what the benefits are of adding nitrous to an SR20. We're back here at On Point Dino and this time we're tuning the drift car, right? This is your drift car, Sasha? This is a joint drift car. Ah, I see, still okay. An, still an eye. All right. Yeah. So tell the people what is exactly done to the SR. We assume it's a, a built bottom end. Yeah, so we bought this car from a customer of mine. I don't actually know what's done to the motor. Yeah. But, um, it's always a good thing. <laughs> it's been holding together at a decent yeah. power. Yeah. It's got a 3076 or something like that. And, uh, Pretty yeah. standard SR setup. Yeah, so it's pretty laggy. It uh, fully spools at 4,600 RPM. Okay. And, yeah, that's, uh, when that you're seems drifting, really laggy. That's a pretty small power band. So what we're doing today is we've plumbed in a two-stage dry nitrous system. Very nice. And we're going to bring that uh, power, band, power band down a little bit uh, lower. To see, So we're pretty much going to see what the benefits of the spool-up are of the nitrous on the turbo. Yeah, so the way we're using the nitrous system is we're just using it to spool the turbo. Once okay. the turbo comes online, the nitrous shuts off. Okay, so it's not a big surge of nitrous no. and you're making big power. No. This is just to spool the this turbo. This is just for response. The idea is to have this two liter respond like a, like a V8. Okay, yeah. sweet. So let's uh, look at the old Dynograph, see where we're at, and then we can fire up the nitrous and see what happens. All right. So here's the before dyno, right? Yes, so you can see we're at about 4,600 RPM here at 12 pounds of boost when the turbo spools and our power band only extends to 7400 RPM so it's actually rather narrow uh, we've got less than half of the engine's RPM range right. uh, of usable power so our goal is going to be to drop this down to about 3000 RPM so that this way you can start a drift at a low RPM and be able to double your wheel speed and create lots of speed. Oh okay that makes a lot of sense and uh, people are probably curious as to what this car makes for power right now so Yep, so 12 and a half pounds of boost makes 340 wheel horsepower. Wow, that's not bad. And uh, torque around 280 ish? The torque is right around 280, um, which is a little low. But yeah. we're going to leave it there just for reliability. Yeah. So we're not breaking gearboxes. I got you. Well, that's a nice setup. I'm sure you're as curious as I am how this whole system works. Yeah, so uh, we've actually done custom firmware with the MoTeC ECU, and we've written our own code to allow the nitrous system to work the way we want it to. And it's a pretty simple setup here in the back. We've got a 10 pound bottle. Yeah. Uh, we've got a pressure sensor here that's connected to the ECU. Okay. And um, there's also a bottle heater here that's connected uh, heater, to the okay. ECU. So the ECU will automatically control the pressure um, by turning the heater on and off. Oh, nice. Wow, that's really amazing. So on a cold day, it'll warm the bottle up yeah. so that the nitrous is always more or less at the same pressure. So we're getting the same power gains. That's amazing. Up front, what do we got going on here? I see two solenoids. Yep, so these are two uh, nitrous solenoids, and then we've got a purge solenoid back here. And the purge lines actually go out through both fenders. Oh, cool. For a symmetrical purge There you effect. go. And uh, we've got the two nozzles underneath the charge pipe here. Um, we've got right now a 35 shot and a 50 shot. So a total of 85 horsepower. So why do you have two shots coming in? So the reason for uh, two stages, or even three would be better, is as the nitrous comes on, it feels smooth. You don't want to get a big shot of 85 horsepower, just oh, as you move okay. your foot slightly. Yeah, yeah, I see. So the Especially idea, for spool up, right? Exactly. So the idea would be, ideally, to have the throttle pedal continue to add power and add power as you ask for more. Yeah. And right now, the way it is, is with a turbocharged car, you get the 40% throttle, and it's, you know, yeah. you can't spool anymore, and from 40 to 100, you get nothing. Yeah. So this system will be basically 60% the first stage will come on, 90% the second stage will come on. As the turbo starts spooling, the first stage will shut off, and then when you almost get a full boost, the second stage will shut off, and the power will go Damn. back to its natural turbo level. It sounds really, really yeah. cool. So the Motec controls the fueling, so it's just dry nitrous shot, and the injectors open more. Yeah, I got you. So to compensate right. for the fuel. Yeah. All right, well, let's look at the uh, Motec code here, and then we can get this thing fired sure. up and onto the dyno. Okay, so here you can see the Motec M1 Tune software. And this is our main uh, inlet manifold pressure activation table. So essentially, if all the other conditions are met, like the minimum RPM and throttle position, um, once we get above atmospheric, so 100 kPa, and we're basically when we're flooring it, even if the turbo hasn't spooled, yeah. 
if we get a 2500 RPM, this uh, first stage of nitrous will activate. And it will stay active either until the time limit elapses or until we get to 160 kPa of boost, which is about 7 or 8 pounds of boost. Okay. And then our second stage stays in until 170 kPa. Um, and this also tapers down with RPM. You can see above 5500 RPM we're not using any nitrous because at that point the engine has enough airflow to spool the turbo on its own. Right. So as the RPM increases, the boost at which we shut off the nitrous goes down to a point at which 5500 RPM we don't use it anymore at all. So the idea behind this is it's just there to spool the turbo at high RPM. We don't need it. We're not going to waste the nitrous. So hopefully the bottle will last us a day or two of the track. Yeah, right on. This is a separate program called M1 Build, which actually allows you to write your own program for the ECU. So you could you could write an active arrow if you wanted. You could write in custom traction control. Wow. You could Anything you can program, the MoTeC is just a controller at that Damn. point to do your bidding. Yeah, MoTeC does big things here. Yeah, so in this case, it's kind of my entry into learning how to program. Yeah. I just wanted to change a nitrous control strategy so that we could have it turn on at a certain threshold and turn off at a certain threshold using a 3D table that I'll show you in the M1 Tune software. Okay. So this is kind of the interface where you write all kinds of nerdy code and try and figure out what you're doing. And the MoTeC does a nice job of telling you if you've screwed up and it won't let you put it together unless it's all making sense. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it worked, uh, worked for me. And here is our first nitrous pull. All right, so you can see there at, uh, for example, if we pick a 3,500 RPM, we've gone from 117 pound-feet of torque to 212 pound-feet of torque. So we've wow, effectively doubled hit. the power at 3,500 RPM. Um, and as the boost is coming on, you can see the first stage turns off here. And in fact, we can leave that on a little bit later and that would help it spool even sooner. So you can see the torque though is pretty smooth even though we've got two stages of nitrous shutting off. And that's because we're blending the spooling turbo with the stages turning off. So right, as they right. shut off, the turbo is spooling and kind of canceling each other out. So we get this kind of flat torque curve effect that kind of doesn't look like your traditional steep upwards ramp of a turbo spooling, but yeah. more of a broad kind of gentle increase of torque with RPM kind of similar to a V8 or a larger displacement. Man, that's incredible. With the nitrous spool test now done, we're gonna try one more thing and that is? Yeah, so now we're gonna hold the engine at exactly 4,700 RPM. Yeah. So say this is fourth gear, you're ready to floor it at 4,700 RPM with and without the nitrous. Without the nitrous, the turbo is within its spool range. It should be able to spool. But in reality, it'll probably take a second or 1.2 seconds for the turbo to actually come online. Come up to it, yeah. With the nitrous active, we'll probably see all that power in three tenths of a second or so, more along the lines yeah. of a naturally aspirated Proving engine. once again that nitrous is So it'll help key. it snap so that when you're trying to get out of the corner, you need the power now so the car doesn't straighten out or something like that. Yeah. You have it. Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Right. Okay, so this graph is showing us the power and torque that the engine produced while the dyno was holding it at 4700 RPM. So this entire graph is shown over a distance that the wheels covered. Yeah, okay. And this is basically the purple line is the boost. So we have here me holding the throttle out of boost and then quickly flooring it. And without the nitrous, it took one second at 4700 RPM for the turbo to spool and for the engine to start producing 290 pound-feet of torque. Right. With the nitrous switched on, here I am again holding the boost, cruising along at 4700 RPM and then abruptly flooring it. Yeah. And it took half that time, it took half a second to get to 280 pound-feet of torque. In fact, the power came on so aggressively that the dyno overshot slightly um, and actually wasn't even applying enough load as it was ramping up mm -hmm. so um, 
In fact, the graph doesn't show it quite as responsive as it was in real life. But um, needless to say, it should be significantly more responsive. Right. Even at lower RPM. Yeah, yeah. Especially so again, RPM. nitrous for the win. We think so at this point. We'll try it on the racetrack and see for sure. So to summarize here, we have our before and after results. And it's pretty staggering in terms of under the curve area here, right? Yeah, so we've got at this point here, we've got a 114 pound-feet of torque My increase. My goodness. Um, and almost exactly an 85 wheel horsepower increase, just like the uh, the jet chart says it should be. So yeah, pretty impressive how accurate those those uh, nitrous charts are. So that's the uh, the final tally here. If you have a turbo that's kind of on the laggy side and you're looking for a solution to get it to spool better, have that instant throttle response, then uh, nitrous may be the way to, for you to go.